Later today is Tom Bash. Tom is the head of customer experience at LEAP. As a roofing industry veteran, his experiences allow him to help contractors think bigger, grow smarter, and increase their margins by leveraging innovative technology. Ryan Bolin is sales manager for The Basement Doctor. Ryan has been with The Basement Doctor for eight years. He started his career there as a project manager and is now the sales manager leading a team of nine. He is a previous owner to a few businesses, one of it, which was a water restoration company that focused on disaster recovery. Vicki Kiger is the marketing director of Exterior Source, a Virginia company specializing in exterior home improvements in the Richmond, Hampton Roads, and Roanoke areas. Vicki handles branding, advertising, social media, website management, digital campaigns, public relations, and community events. She has been a board member of the Chesterfield Chamber of Commerce and Greater Southport Business Association. And with that, I'd like to hand things over to Tom to begin the presentation. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, it was really great uh, introductions. I, I I like it when I feel like I'm the least smart one here, so that's great. <laughs> Definitely joined by some great great people today. Uh, first of all, thank you everybody for being here. I uh, really appreciate you take appreciate you taking time to uh, learn more about this and uh, share in the discussion with us. Uh, I'd love to invite you to ask your questions in the uh, chat field if you if you can. Uh, we'll get to those at the end here, but I want to make sure that uh, uh, you get the most out of this uh, uh, Zoominar. Uh, but with that, Vicki, Ryan, I'd uh, like to start this discussion. And you know, we're, we're going to talk about the homeowner experience and uh, what their expectations are, how you've risen to meet those, um, and what you foresee uh, um, as changes in, in the landscape. So uh, first, to sort of set the stage here, uh, what are the stages of the homeowner experience that you focus on? And, and Vicki, I'll let you start with this one. Well, so I'm going to probably start with something fairly simple. Um, you can go through the various stages like, you know, you advertise, you get leads, you set appointments, you visit uh, the home and do the in-home sales presentation, you um, and do the installation and you do the follow-up. And all of that is pieces and parts of the whole experience. That's the pretty nuts and bolts. But um, as far as the experience that we hope to give to the customer, we hope that we make the customer's experience hassle free. So regardless of all the pieces and parts, if you don't do that, from the time they see our ad to the time they call us to the time we do the installation, we do the follow up and hopefully have a happy customer. If you don't make that hassle free, then you're, all the stages aren't going to matter at all. You have to make sure that everything is easy for the customer. So if there's an issue, we try to address it, you know, immediately. So that's kind of really a simplistic look. I think uh, probably Ryan will have a, a whole different viewpoint. But also as far as with advertising, I'll look at it from the advertising standpoint too. If we put an ad out, we do um, television infomercials. So when we do these infomercials, we hope that the customer has an experience with us that they feel like they know the person who's on the, the screen. We've used the same person for quite some time. And in fact, many people think that he's the owner of our company and he's not, but we hope that he, they have a real pleasant experience there. So that's um, awareness there. They have awareness of our product and then we want them to take action and he does a lot of things in the commercial. He gives, you know, if you call us in the next 30 minutes, this happens. If you buy a product from us, this happens. So we have different stages that we go through there. But we want the homeowner to see that we're there to solve their problem. They have a problem. We're there to solve it for them. And we want to make it hassle free and as easy as possible. Yeah, and just to piggyback on two things uh, that Vicki said. Uh, we have also been around for a long time. We've been um, a kind of community staple here since 1987 in Columbus, Ohio. And our brand recognition is that um, pe people call us because they expect things to be easy, uh, hassle-free, just like you said. You know, if you make it hard for someone to come on board with you and be part of, of your family uh, and, and be one of, of your customers, they're looking for reasons to say no to begin with. That's their job, right? Their job out there is to say no to begin with. So 
the, the easier we make it for them to say yes, uh, the, the easier it is for them to say yes, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, and, and we'll talk about this more, but um, sitting with someone having to fill out papers for three hours, it's not easy for anybody, for the person that's doing it uh, or for the person that's, that's getting ready to write you a deposit check who's exhausted. So, so again, making it easy is what it's all about. Yeah, and uh, I'll go back to, you know, the, th this, this question's kind of loaded, right? Like what experience, which part of it do you focus on? It sounds like we talked, um, you both talked about sort of that initial customer acquisition point. Um, you, do you also look at uh, the complete journey? So not only when the customer uh, first uh, you know, recognizes who your brand is and what you are and those interactions, but also the touch points of, you know, where they, when they meet a sales rep, when they have a question about their installation, you know, when they uh, look for um, payment or, or, you know, questions around that and, and all the way to, you know, when the job's completed and, you know, six years, 12 years, however many years down the road where maybe they have another project that they're interested in doing and if you don't do it, maybe they're looking for a referral or maybe you're looking for a referral from them. How do you, do you, do you, do both of you just focus on that initial customer acquisition or do you put emphasis on other parts of that journey? Well, I can sneak in there for a minute and, and speak to the long term, which for us has become easier in the last uh, almost four years that we've been using Leap and, and how much easier the long term is now. Because before, uh, the, the way we run things is you have one point of contact from the time the appointment's assigned. You're assigned a project manager and your project manager uh, takes you through point of sale, takes you to pre-inspection, helps out with installation and then post installation. Um, and, and that is so easy to track through Leap because we have, auto, we, have, we have footprints of each part that's happened automatically. So it goes straight to our system. So we can track what anyone's doing at any time. Well, let's say the worst case scenario, you know, the, the company's looking long-term, let's say we lose an employee for whatever reason. So let's say they just, they move away. Um, in the past, that long-term really took a big hit because we didn't have all that information. A lot of the time it, it left with the person, but now we have uh, so much information and so much detail that I can personally assign it to another one of my uh, project managers who can really read it all and pick it up and, and, and maintain that relationship right where it left off. That is in itself, it is invaluable. Yeah, and I'll say um, I'm going to have to give a shout out to Leap in that regard, too. I talked to our sales manager. I went over some of the questions that we were going to discuss today. And one of the things he said, he, he said, you can look, obviously, you can look back at previous bids. We might have a customer, and it especially happened in 2020. We had customers who were right in the beginning of the pipeline with us, and then the pandemic hit. Once it hit, people were like, oh, I, I can't do anything. Just everything froze. So then as time went on, they came back to us and said, okay, now I think I'm ready to start this project. So we could go back to all of our notes and leave. We knew exactly who it's, what salesman had been there, what had been done, if the bid had been given, uh, any questions that needed to be answered. We knew where we were in the process and we could pick it up, you know, just like that and proceed. And so um, our, our sales manager has said that, the tracking has been uh, such an asset for us. You know, you're not going through boxes and we've done this. We, before we went digital, boxes and boxes and boxes, we had to call in a shredder to come, you know, one of those shredding companies to come in because you've had to go through all the boxes and find the contracts. It's a, just a completely different situation now, much more efficient. Yeah, awesome. Well, that kind of uh, leads us into our next point here. How has the, the, the homeowner journey changed digitally? And I know you both kind of touched on this, but Vicki, I'll let you pick okay. up here. <laughs> well, so <laughs> I, I have a lot, a lot on this. <laughs> okay, so um, luckily for us at the end of 2019, our owner wanted to focus a whole lot more on digital. So we made a commitment in the first part of 2020 to focus on digital. So um, we increased our budget and then the pandemic hit we increased our budget again in the summer and we increased our budget again in the fall. We realized as everybody did that 
people are at home, they're not going anywhere, digital exploded, everything was online, online, online. So luckily for us, we had started increasing our uh, pay-per-click advertising before all of this happened last year. And then we just increased it as the, the person who handles our pay-per-click saw the need for it. And there was a lot of need. We put more money into whatever categories had the most action. So um, that was a real positive for us that we were able to do that. And then um, for the customer as, as, as well as for us, 2020 changed the digital journey. It just blew it up. Um, more and more people responded to the pay-per-click ads, more people contacted us by live chat, they text us. Um, we did have people still calling us, um, so that didn't stop, but you had different, different means of people contacting you. And then the last thing I would say, again, I have to give a shout out to Leap on this regard because again, in talking to our sales manager, he, he gave me a whole list of things, but he said that digitally with Leap, now we're able to control the whole sales process. It helped us, we can bid it more accurately. If I know everybody knows lumber has increased dramatically, the cost of it. So when we're building the deck, if we're building with pressure treated wood, we can put the pricing in to, to Leap uh, quickly. We don't have to go back and tell the customer, hey, uh, it's lumber's increased the price of it and we got to change this bid. We can do it digitally. It reduces the paperwork for us. We're not going into a home with all these catalogs and flyers. They're right there in Leap. We can show it. But the best part is it's beautiful. It's color. It's very, very, it makes a nice presentation. It's professional. The customer expects digital now. They expect something professional. We can take photos of the project. We can draw on it. We can show the customer what we're going to do. But it's just a, it's just a whole the process alone with with being able to use leap with uh, what we do and how we present to the customer has been dramatic and and believe me leap did not ask for an endorsement I am really given that because it is a true fact so I really I really want you to know our our sales manager said it was the number one thing we had done to increase the customer's experience a pleasant experience so that's a that's a good I think a good recommendation yeah, every time we come on here uh, and speak to folks, we do it because we want to, not because we're asked, you know, when the opportunity comes up, seeing how we have been able to, especially with the pandemic, improve customer experience from anybody who's been in sales for a long time, ha had a flip book, right? And their flip book would get dirty and dog-eared and their pages would be out of order and they had the same literature uh, that sometimes didn't match the literature from last year's flip book. And, and, you know, and that wasn't all that long ago for us, right. you know, we're talking just a matter of years. So um, being able to move ahead and get everything so squared away and tight, that doesn't wear out, that looks gorgeous every time, uh, that's professional and, and easy to use. Again, it goes back to easy, make things easy. People are going to, people are going to get on board. So not having to go out to get this out of the car. Oh, oops, I forgot that. You have everything at your fingertips to where uh, all of your presentation resources, your photos, like you said, other jobs that you can access through Lead to look at uh, and share with. It, it's just made it to where um, people don't have to touch as much. You know, you know the, the samples thing has kind of gone away into photos and videos, right? You know, so that the digital journey we can show so many more videos of installations and products and things that bring people right along and, and make, make them feel part of the process from the very get go. So it's, it's just been, uh, it's been a game changer. And Tom, um, I'll say that, believe it or not, we have some customers that still don't have email. I mean, we have a lot of uh, older customers and there are some that don't have email. I know it's hard to believe out there, but um, so even those customers expect us to have obviously a professional presentation, but even they're expecting us to show them something digitally. And we come in there, our salesmen come in there and they've got the iPad. Um, you know, that customer probably doesn't have an iPad, but they're 
that's a wow factor for them. And they can see it. It's right there in front of them. It's color. It's crisp. And it, it really does enhance the customer experience. Yeah, we appreciate that. We, we've talked a lot about the, um, the sales experience and the, the customer's experience, the homeowner's experience relative to the sales uh, process. But just curious to know if, if uh, you know, with going digital there and, and, and you both have been, uh, uh, I would consider like early adopters in, in that, but are there other areas throughout the, the customer experience, call it journey, uh, that you've seen um, room for improvement to, to become digital? Are you doing anything from a communication standpoint, which I know we'll, we'll touch on here in a little bit, but uh, just curious to know what other digital aspects have you have you um, seen an increase in expectance from your from your customers at? Well, well DocuSign for one, you know, people want to be able to yeah. sign their documents uh, not in front of you, especially if they are extra concerned. You know, we went to for uh, some time we did Zoom appointments and we did contact free appointments with people, um, and we had many people want to proceed with work but didn't want have to have face-to-face -face contact with somebody. So them being able to electronically sign documents uh, and send documents back and forth that, you know, I know DocuSign and those things have been around for a long time, but I don't think they've ever been used like they were over the last year, at least yeah. for us. That's, you know, we used more of that last year than ever. Yeah. And I can say just anecdotally, we, we, we saw almost, a, I think about a three X increase, you know, per account on the, their usage of, of DocuSign. So we know, you know, statistically that, yeah, the, the usage of e-signatures is, has definitely risen. And like you said, I, I, I'm sure that's a, that's because it's, it's the homeowner's expectation at this point that they're able to uh, sign a contract remotely and digitally uh, and not, you know, in, in person with a written contract. Yeah. And then with us, um, I, I mean, obviously we also, as everyone says, pivoted to uh, virtual presentations. We didn't find that we did that many of them. Uh, our customer didn't really seem to have too much of a, a problem with us coming into the home, but some when the pandemic hit, I mean, it was warm here and it of course went into the summer. We had our, uh, our salesman actually take a folding table and they could do an appointment outside. So, which we had a lot of people do that. So people weren't too bothered by that. We did do some virtual presentations and that'll stay with us because I think that's gonna grow. I think as the um, the younger, younger generation gets to where they're gonna buy a house and they're gonna do home improvements and things like that, they're gonna expect that. And then uh, we have live chat. Um, Live chat is, we've seen a real, a, a strong increase in that. If you don't have that on your website, you need to get it. People want to chat with you. Some people don't want to talk to you. I mean, they'll talk to you eventually, but they don't want to talk to you at first. And then um, Messenger, we're getting a lot of, um, I guess, questions and some feedback and some people who want to talk to us on Facebook Messenger. That's not my favorite way for them to talk to us. Uh, live chat's much better, but it is another avenue. And you're going to see more and more in that, in that increase. I mean, it's amazing all the ways that people can contact you. I can hardly keep up with them because I'm the one that answers them. And we also had a discussion along our talks over the last few weeks about Podium. We use Podium a lot too. Uh, and Podium is a great way for people to be able to leave you reviews digitally and communicate with you. Um, so we, we have implemented, we, we started using Podium in 2019. Um, and it's been, again, just another great digital tool for that homeowner to easily leave you a good review um, when you did a good job. But it's just as easy to leave a bad one, so you better do a good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I want I want us to, to pivot now to how you measure uh, homeowner satisfaction. And, you know, there's, it's interesting, like I've gone through some kind of custo uh, customer journey mapping exercises, you know, and, and you can have really good experiences in some areas and uh, indifferent experiences and obviously poor experiences. And it's really important, I know from, from my perspective, like not just to uh, think that indifferent is okay, but that there's room to increase that to a really satisfied uh, customer. So I'd love to know, you know, what kind of measurements do you look at to gauge uh, homeowner satisfaction? And then the second part of that would be, what do you, what do you look to do to increase customer satisfaction? 
Well, so I, I'll go. Um, we try several ways to um, to get a pulse on our customer experience. Um, so after the project is done, once the, ins the installer's there, um, the project's done, he's discussed it with the customer, he talked to him about what he's done, everything's finished now. Um, we give a short paper survey, we, we still do that. That's a one step thing. It's a very short thing for them to fill out while we're there. We bring that back to the office. It doesn't always happen. They don't always wanna fill it out, but most of the time people do want to. Then we call the customer um, one to two days later um, our production assistant calls and goes over whole, the whole installation process and talks to them about um, did they arrive on time? Were they pleasant? Did they greet you? Did they talk to you when the project was uh, completed? Did they clean up properly? Do you have any issues? Right there, that's a key thing. Do you have, did you have any issues? So they want to try to nip that in the bud right then. But, you know, sometimes things happen and you don't have an issue right then. You might have it later. But still, you're trying to, to get a get a head start on it and then later we have we use gill quality so we survey by uh, sending out uh, we send out surveys not to everybody now because we've done thousands and thousands and thousands of them but we send out gill quality um, to allow them to rank us in certain categories and then to leave us feedback we take those and then I put them on Facebook, I put them on our other social media channels, and then we use them, uh, our, our salespeople use them as well. And then uh, I think Brian said he uses Podium, we use BirdEye to get our customers to post to Facebook and Google because it's extremely important to get customers on Google, hopefully saying nice things about you. And yeah, you better hope that they do because then you're gonna have issues. But that's a, that's one reason, uh, one way that we do, uh, we measure another type of customer satisfaction with Google and Facebook reviews. And you know, we do a lot of the same things. Uh, you know, some people like to write letters still. So we do send out paper surveys, we use Podium. Um, we set a we we set a 15 day call and a 45 day call after installation, um, and we also schedule the project manager back out there. You know, we let we let the customer kind of determine how much they want to be involved. So we ask them. You know, and that's the thing. You'd be surprised what people will give you if you just ask, right? Um, so you know, we want to know everything we're doing good, but we also want to know if there's something that we can improve upon, you know, because we always strive for perfection and, and, you know, nine times out of 10, there's going to be a homeowner who watches the foreman work so hard and a crew work so hard. And they're afraid to say, oh, well, that little thing bugs me because they're like, you know, these guys just worked in my house for two weeks so hard. And, and they're, and they're more likely to tell someone who's a little bit removed. So we always have someone call that wasn't on site just to say, hey, listen, you know, I know I wasn't there, but I can, you know, I, I want to make sure you're happy with every last little thing. So if, even if there's a minor thing, let us know and, we'll, and we'll, we'll take care of it. So, you know, we always have that that last call. Ryan, that, that's interesting that you, you do one at 15 days, another one at 45 days. Is, did I hear mm -hmm. that correctly? What's yeah, we want people to live with their, we want people to live with their purchase for a little while, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's when they can also, you know, because a lot of the times when we've left a home, uh, maybe we didn't perform all the work that they were interested in, or once they've lived with it, they said, hey, you know, now that this is done, I really want to have this done. And, you know, and that's, of course, the time where we ask them for referrals as well. Hey, if we did a great job, you know, we, we hope you would let everybody else, you know, friends and family know that, that here's what we did for you. So, yeah, we like people to live with their purchase for a little while and get comfortable with it and then get their feedback on it. Yeah, it's great. There's, uh, you know, in the world of, and I don't know how familiar everyone is with like NPS, but there's a transactional model and, and a um, relational model. So basically like if you're going to gauge customer feedback, uh, you know, maybe like right after a sales appointment, that may tell you what their interaction was like with that sales rep. Um, but it doesn't give the overall picture of their interaction with the company. And so that relational, I like doing it at 45 days because they're further removed from the actual like, you know, processes of the sales uh, portion and the installation portion. And at this point, they're looking holistically at the, at the work that you've done and are able to provide that relational you know, score or how they feel about your company in a whole. So kind of two different measures of, of customer or homeowner satisfaction. 
Awesome. Um, all right, so our next uh, slide here. Are you working on any new ideas for improving the homeowner experience? So Vicki, I'll let you go ahead first on this one. Um, well, I'll, I'll, this is a really simple, it's not a new idea, but it's a really simple, simple, I can't say anything more simple to improve the homeowner's experience. It, it's gonna shock everybody. Answer the phone, answer <laughs> the phone. I mean, seriously, I'm not joking. Uh, we have found that people are sometimes amazed that they can call us and we actually get a real person on the line and not um, it rings and rings and rings or they get a answering machine or it's something like that or just nothing happens. So whenever I go out and speak um, about the company at different events, I always say that and it gets a big laugh because people, they, they kind of think about it and they kind of you can see them all going, what? She just said, answer the phone. But it's true because I can't tell you the number of people I've dealt with in the home improvement industry. If I'm getting something done to our house and you call them, you get no answer or you get the phone ringing or you get a, a, a a recorder and you have to leave a message and hope they'll call you back. So that's a really simple answer. Make it easy again, as we went back to talk about at the beginning, make it easy for somebody to do business with you. Don't ever make it hard. They have a lot of options. And today they have more options than ever because they're online searching. There's like 20 other people they can call. If you don't answer the phone, you're going to be in trouble. So um, the other thing is after hours, now we, we have live answering from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and then on Saturday, we have shortened hours. But um, after hours, like if somebody calls at two o'clock in the morning, we do have an answering service. So they can still talk to a live person. It's not the same experience as when they talk to somebody in the office, but we do have that. And then um, we have our sales team send out um, after the project's over. Again, we give a, a little bit of time for the customer to see their project and get used to it. The salesperson sends out a thank you note. We have uh, our logo has got green in it. So we have green envelopes, they're bright green. You can't really mistake them and it has our logo on them. And then we have a card inside and they just write a little note. It says, thank you for your business. And then they write a personal note. So um, that's in today's, in today's environment, that's, that's something pretty neat because you don't see a lot of that. And then, um, We've started a program. It's actually in the works right now. Um, I got contacted by somebody on LinkedIn to um, about cookies. So I've got, I hope I can show it. So you can do this box, if you can see it. It's a wooden box and all the cookies are gone. <laughs> so I think except for two. Um, but anyway, there's cookies in here. There's 20 of them. And um, we're going to start sending these out to customers based on you know how much they spend. We, we can't send them to everybody because it's fairly expensive, but we're going to start sending those out to customers. Um, we went, went back last year and then we we're going to do this every month because I think it's a nice little gift. It's just something extra to say thank you above and beyond the thank you note and the call to follow up. We want them to feel like we appreciate their business. Always make a customer feel like you appreciate their business. I say that when somebody posts a review, I almost always say, thank you for your business. We appreciate your business. It's a simple thing to say, but it's really, really important. So that's some of the things we're doing. And it's funny, Vicki talked about answering the phone because <laughs> it's the same thing with us. And I had no idea she was going to say that because it's so <laughs> true. We have focused on, um, you know, we have uh, about 150 employees and uh, we harp all the time on answer your phone, answer your phone, because our, our point of contact, again, like I said before, I want someone calling my guys or our reps before they call the office. If they have a problem or if they want to say something nice, great, they can follow up with the office, but they need to talk to their contact person. So no matter, no matter when it is, answer your phone, um, especially if someone's upset about something. Because if you don't answer, 10 minutes goes by and they're 10 minutes more mad. So, you know, answering your phone is a huge one. Uh, things we do a lot more of now, improving the homeowner experience beforehand, is we send bio videos out for uh, the person that's coming to their home, both the foreman and the project manager. So they know a little bit about that person before, they're gonna, before they come in. So they have a little connection there. 
And we've also done um, what's called in your neighborhood. So over the years, we have populated um, in central Ohio, 60,000 customers or so. And we can, by radius from any address, uh, show which houses we've worked in. Um, and of course, we have permission from all these people to do this. So we're not just sending out random information, but, uh, and they give us uh, what level of info we can release. However, so we can show person A that within half a mile of their house, we've done 55 jobs over the last couple of years. Um, and it shows job type and, and it doesn't have dollar amounts. But so a lot of the times they didn't know we did work for their neighbor two doors down. So that, so they, can improve their own experience as well by going and talking to those folks. And it happens all the time. Yeah, I've got a question for, and, and I'll open this up to both of you. Uh, what improvements have you made as a result of direct customer feedback? You know, what, what kind of, have you changed anything or put in place something that is a re direct result of, of one of those, you know, surveys or calls that you've done to, to past customers? But yeah, if someone tells you you're doing something they don't like and you don't fix it, what what's the point yeah. of asking? <laughs> Right. Uh, so, so absolutely. Um, we've, we've changed even the style of booties we wear in people's houses. That's just one that comes to mind. It's so simple. Um, we got heavier duty booties because the booties were wearing out. Uh, so, so, I mean, just little things like that. When you, when you have uh, 10 people in a month say something about that or, or just something little, then you fix it. So that's the biggest thing I can say is if someone's, if you, if you're getting a common theme, and you don't do anything about it, then what's the point? Ryan, do you guys have a formal process for, for taking in that feedback and making those improvements or Absolutely. is it you do? Okay. What's that look like? Um, if, so if it comes in, um, we, they, it can come to our website. It can come through podium. It can come through the written letters. It can come. Um, our general manager has his cell phone number posted on our website and every email that goes out to every customer. So, so let's say someone calls him, it goes through the department heads. Uh, so the department heads will get together and, and make changes based on, on what they're seeing. And they meet every two weeks to discuss improvements and what's going on in the field. So let's say we meet, but uh, so if we see something that's going on and it's a common theme, then we fix it right away. But it's not, you, know, you can't go fix, you can't go change everything that, you do in business just because one person says, oh, I didn't like this. But if you have 150 or 200 people saying, I didn't like this, or I did like this, um, you know, maybe it's something that we're, that people like that we're just going to expand, right? So, um, you know, like t-shirts, you <laughs> know, we talked about this the other day. We had so many people thank us for leaving them a t-shirt that we're like, well, then we're going to leave one for everybody, you know, stuff like that, even though it's something simple and cheap. Um, people love it. So, you know, just expanding on the good and fixing the bad. That's great. And I'll say that um, Ryan brought up uh, booties. That was something that we implemented um, as a result of we had some customers who said that when the salesperson came in, they tracked mud. And you don't like to see that. That shouldn't happen. And we we did that almost immediately ordered them and where they're branded, they have our logo on them. So we make sure that um, our salespeople do that. Installers usually don't go into the home unless they're doing windows, but if they, if they go in the home, they wear them as well. And I can personally say that I really appreciate that because I had people working on the house. They didn't come in. I had to put the paper down on the floor for them to go from the garage to the bathroom they didn't do it and they had dirty feet and that would have really this they were they were brand new floors so that's something you have to think about and then we had people who said you know i i've got all this again going back to making things digital you come in here you've got all these things to show me it's like overwhelming there's papers everywhere and this and this so that was one of the reasons why we wanted to move to more a digital experience to kind of uh, 
get everything together and make it a nice, simple visual presentation. I think that helps the customer as well. And we have our production assistant and our production manager. They talk constantly about feedback from customers. We get it. Um, we get it in our surveys. We get it through phone calls. We get it on the project itself. And we have made changes because you're looking always for a recurring theme. If there's a recurring theme, then you've got a you got a situation you need to fix. It's not again like Ryan said, not one or two people, but you begin to hear something and you're like, uh, this is becoming uh, more and more likely that we need to really address this. So you have to you have to listen to your customers. They they tell you a whole lot. If you don't listen, then you're going to have some issues. So that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, our uh, last slide here, uh, let me click on this, uh, is about communication. And it, it is deserving of its own slide because it is such an important aspect of uh, the homeowner's experience. Um, and we mentioned, you know, you, you've talked about a couple of things like answering your phone. Obviously, that's uh, really important, as simple as it sounds. Um, and there's also this, this idea of this dark period between the time that uh, uh, contract signed to the time that the work is actually performed or installed. And, and oftentimes there can be a lot of angst amongst the homeowners during that period of uncertainty of when something's going to happen or whether it's a result of, uh, you know, lack of material or weather delays or whatever it might be. Um, it, the homeowner sort of left in the dark on there. So wanted to talk about, uh, uh you know, how communication, uh, um, affects, you know, the, the homeowner experience and what you're doing about it. Vicki, I'll let you, you can go first here. <laughs> okay, well, I have, I have two things. Um, communication is the problem to be answered. I think that's in a song too. Uh, but if you remember nothing else, remember that. It's, you have to communicate with your customer. And then I call how we communicate hand-holding 101. So just think of it very simple. So if you're a customer and you've signed a contract and in the summer, you know, we could be four weeks out on a project depending upon how busy we are. So if you sign a contract the first of April and we're four weeks out and we're planning, it looks like when we've, we've talked to you and we've, we've told you, hey, Mrs. Smith, it's probably going to be uh, in the middle of April. Oh, did I, did I say we, okay, you signed a contract at the beginning of April. It's probably going to be the big, the middle of May before we're going to be out to see you, but we're going to keep in contact with you. She's given us a deposit. So, you know, she's, she's committed. So we follow up with that customer. Now we have our production manager calling her, calling the customer throughout the process, because it is a dark period. You've given money to somebody, you hope your project is on the the list to be done and you hope they're going to show up so things happen we get some projects done faster some slower so we might call we will call her at certain periods um, our production coordinator has a schedule for that so she'll call and, and she'll as we get closer to it um hey mrs smith it looks like we're going to be able to get to you a whole week earlier so now we're the first of may as we get closer to it then we're going to call her the week of and we're going to say it looks like we're going to be able to come on tuesday or wednesday which day is preferable for you and then as the day before we call and remind her we're coming so we're all through the process we are communicating our production coordinator is communicating with the customer the reason for that is it came up as one of the things that we needed to do a better job on communication is the problem to be answered and if you follow that and you do a little hand holding 101 you will make your life better and your customer experience will be tremendously better so that's that's kind of it's simple, but that's that's what we do. All right, we do two things, and the reason I was looking aside there for a second is I was actually opening up my leak. So you may or may not be able to see this, but in every single one of our contracts, we have what's called a, a what's next form, and you can't see it, but you'll get the point. So it's embedded in every single one of our documents, and what that says is it says you've chosen the right place. What comes next, and then one through six it describes the process and approximately how long it takes that process. Uh, so, you know, it says your job's going back to the office, it's turned into admin, it's getting processed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and throughout that, each time their project moves from one station to the next, they get an email or text that says, hey, uh, Mrs. Smith, your project has left admin and has gone to scheduling. Um, just that little touch point. Um, and we ask them again, 
It's all about asking. We ask them ahead of time. Um, hey, you know, once we're done here, I'm going to leave and, and we're going to have that period, right? Uh, that honeymoon period gets gets really scary if you don't talk to somebody. So would you rather us reach out to you with updates via text, call, you know, however? Um, and then our, their what's next form has department phone numbers under each step. So if they have a question about that step, they can call and talk to a person. Um, and, and it works pretty good. You know, I'd say over the last three years, that part of our business was lacking a little bit and it has made the world of difference uh, because nobody likes surprises. Right. And, and, you know, uh, you find that out the hard way, but uh, no one likes surprises. So the more they know, uh, the better off they are. And if, and if you're telling them too much, they're going to let you know. We don't want to bug them, but we still want to keep them informed. I don't think I've ever had a customer tell us, boy, you're keeping me way too involved with my project. So I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a real thing. So, but that, that's how we handle it. And it works pretty good. Uh, Ryan, I also, I also like that you send video bios. You do that when a, when a rep goes out to the home. I think I heard. Yeah. So, so um, when they call our office to schedule an appointment, that's when they're assigned a project manager. And so we send those out the night before their appointment. So the, the person on the phone says, Hey, um, look out for this email. It's a confirmation email and it's going to have a, a video in it uh, that shows the person that's coming out to your house. It's a short video. And it's also going to show you some of the work we've done in your neighborhood. So please make sure you open that. So when they get confirmation that, Hey, yes, I'm going to look at it. And then when the project manager gets to the house, one of the first warm-up questions is, hey, did you have a chance to read the information the office sent you? And if the answer is no, then, hey, let's look at it real quick because, boom, there's your referrals right there. So, you know, it's all uh, it's all on purpose. Yep, absolutely. And sorry, Vicki, it looked like you were going to add something and I, I jumped in. <laughs> well, no, 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 that's okay. I was just going to say, uh, kind of jump on what uh, – Ryan was saying you I think everybody should do a what to expect if you don't have a what to expect form or sheet or or something in leap if you use that you need to have something because you want to lead your customer I think the very first slide you showed was almost like a map you want to show your customer a map of what's going to happen this is going to happen this is going to happen this is going to happen you don't have the times in there right right that at that particular situation but you you do have you know the customer will know the whole process and you want again make it easy for the customer they've contacted you when they had a lot of other choices of people to go to make it easy for them to know now what's next and i think it's very important to have if you want to call it a what to expect sheet, that's a, I think that's a key thing and it's fairly simple and, and you can put it on your website in a Q&A. Um, you can give a more detailed one to the customer when you sell the project, but I think it's a, it's a key aspect of the customer experience. Yeah, uh, and Vicki and Ryan, do, do either of you use any sort of technology or automation in, in your communication with customers? I mean, there are, are there automated messages that are going out or, or is that done by somebody in the office? Ours is all done by a person because it pops up on their screen. So it, so, so that person who's in charge of uh, say Leslie's uh, gonna put a file through, it, it notifies her, you know, you need to contact this customer and let them know that you're finished. So, I mean, it takes two seconds, so. But it, but it comes from an overall uh, basement doctor phone number that'll that will come up as the basement doctor on caller ID yeah. that kind of thing or 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 it's a it's an info at my basement doctor email so sure. it's all bridged into the same thing. Vicky, do the same. Yeah, we have, um, but we do what the a person does it as well. That's our production assistant, and then we have another person that that does that as well. So it's not automated like something doesn't. It, it, it's very much like Ryan says, but um, we do have automation and some other things when we, we have, uh, when customers sign up for a newsletter, for example, on our website, we have, that's not, it's somewhat of a customer experience in a different avenue, but when someone signs up for our newsletter, they get an automated response. We do, we do have some things like that, but as far as 
the customer's experience in purchasing the product and having it installed, we we use a, a, a real live person who does that. It's not something that's automated that goes back to them. Gotcha. Yeah. The only reason I, I mentioned that is, you know, we've got a, a partner with a Hatch, who's a business messaging platform. Go to, you know, think for folks to, to look at if they're interested in that, as well as Mar Lamar is another good company that yeah. does some automation around texting and, and messaging and, and helping helping minimize the impact of that dark period between between sale and uh, and uh, uh, production. Uh, I'm going to encourage everybody to uh, put your questions in the in the chat field or the Q and A section. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Janelle, and then we'll jump into to some Q and A. Great. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, everybody, for that presentation. Um, we're going to open things up for questions in just a minute. Uh, but first, we'd like to tell you about a special offer from Leap for everyone on today's call. So, Tom, could you tell us a little bit about the offer? And I will go ahead and launch this poll question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pretty pretty uh, straightforward, right? We want to buy you lunch. So have a conversation with us. Uh, we, will, we will send you a gift card for lunch. Uh, but more importantly, you're going to get a lot out of it. Uh, regardless of whether you, uh, you know, decide Leap is for you or not, uh, I'd encourage you to, to speak with, with our team because you know, they do speak with, with many contractors across the country and work to understand your business and your needs um, and can just help as somebody to uh, be a sounding board for you as you're, as you're looking to make improvements and see where, um, you know, technology can fit in and play a role. And I appreciate Vicki and Ryan's unsolicited uh, uh, mentions <laughs> of Leap today. I, I do appreciate that. Uh, but if you're interested, you know, let us know and uh, we will send you lunch. Let me add something for you real quick. Uh, for people that aren't involved with Leap yet, the, the biggest fear I think that Vicky will probably agree is we've got all this information and how do we stuff it inside this iPad? Uh, I mean, that, I think that's everybody's fear is, um, you know, making the the leap to leap uh, is, is, is this, is this difficult? You know, is this hard? And we have, our price catalog was 46 pages long. Um, and, and I personally had the task of making this whole thing happen and it wasn't that bad. And that, and that's, that's the thing that's important to realize is that you have someone on the other end that, that helps you through it and the way it's formatted it's really not bad and it's so worth it. And it's easy to change on the fly. And that's one of the greatest things is that if you wanna change, you know, I can push out a priceless update in a matter of 10 seconds to everybody in the field. So, so you know, once you get there, it's just all the work is worth it. And um, you just kind of, you'll regret it. The longer you wait, the more you regret it. I appreciate that, Ryan. Well, it's very much like our sales manager said, it allows you to control the sales process and it's made it leaps and bound <laughs> as the saying goes, it's just made it just a much better experience. I, I mean, that's totally unsolicited. I asked him again, as I said, in preparation for this, and he just went through a whole list of things that had made it better by converting to leap. The sales guys like it better. And we've had, we have us in at our beach office in Chesapeake, Virginia, we have some guys who've been there for a, quite a while. And so they had to make this transition and it was, they, they thought it was a whole lot easier than they were expecting. So that's good. And our sales managers both like it. It's just, it, it's really helped the whole customer experience. And that's key. Make your customer happy, make it easy for them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right, we're, uh, we're gonna move into the Q&A portion here. It looks like we have a few minutes for it. Uh, so let's see, I got several questions that came in. Um, first one I'll read here. How do you deal with negative feedback regarding workers or installers? Uh, Ryan, you wanna take that one? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the way we deal with negative feedback is very quickly um, and we get both sides of the story before we make any moves on it because you know there's usually one story there's the other story and the truth is somewhere in between mm -hmm. um so so we we have to take that very seriously because these days you know it takes one person to go out and undo a whole year's with a girl uh, with a wonderful work that you did right 
you know, people like to read negative things, not positive things. It's easy to have a happy customer. Everyone can do that, right? Um, but we, we usually, if they'll let us, um, we go there. You know, I don't like to deal with negative things on the phone. Um, like I said, in this time, even if it's a Zoom meeting, right? Um, people are a lot more disarmed when you're face to face. So anytime that I can get within a relative distance of them, again, because we're not gonna be like this forever. Uh, so that's the way we've always done it is go meet with somebody and get and see what their feelings are because their feelings are their reality, whether that's exactly what happened or not. So we have to take that in consideration and we just try to, you know, make a good decision going forward with it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Vicki, any, anything to add on that? Same thing. I think that the, it's, it's in the middle. You, you get both sides and you will find that the customer is right in this part. This, the installer was right on this part. Um, you know, like when they tracked mud into the house, yeah, it, hey, the installer did do that or the salesperson did do that. So that was an easy thing to fix. And you can do that with a, you know, a little gift card or something like that. So you, you want to be aware of it. But if we have a serious situation, and I can't think of anything that's been, you know, dramatic, but sometimes you have issues, we send the sales manager out exactly like Ryan says, face to face, it really helps. People are mad, mad, mad. Uh, because if they're sitting there at their computer, you know, we can just send off anything everybody has a voice and they can send off whatever they want but then when you talk to them face to face usually they've had time to calm down and they're a little bit more reasonable so we we try to get these things settled up front but you know sometimes you do have to have the sales manager go or the production manager go to the house and get this get, get the situation fixed right yep um awesome appreciate that uh, another question came in, and, and Vicky, this may be towards you, because I think you made a comment about uh, uh, homeowner not having emails. Um, so the question was, if your customers don't have email, how do you go about giving them a copy of the agreement? Oh, well, we print it. Okay. Then right. you go back to print it. Oh, and then sometimes we have, like I said, we have older customers. Sometimes we're contacted by their son or daughter, and we communicate through them. We could send that to send it digitally that way, but we just print a copy and take it. I take it to them. I mean, the customer, when we send it to them digitally, they can print one. But if they don't have a printer or they don't have a computer, or we just old fashioned take it to them. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I did get a question about, is there a scaled down version of Leap for small businesses? Uh, Steve, there is, there's a, there's a Leap Pro version, but again, I didn't encourage you to, to speak to the, to the team at Leap and they'll, they'll help uh, in that um, you know, decision. Uh, I was gonna no say, it, it's designed for any style of business. I mean, it's, it's as big or as little as you want it to be. I, I, I mean, that's a fair statement, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yep. Yeah, there's, we have a, um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but there's a Leap Pro and a Leap Premium. Leap Pro uh, doesn't have a price guide, so it doesn't have um, the ability to do you know that that pricing that uh, you know Ryan had talked about. It has the the, the basic functionalities of document creation, those some other right. benefits of financing and that type of thing. So absolutely, it's what you put into it is what you're going to get out. Yeah, of. I mean, yeah, like you could make it whatever you wanted. Yeah. Uh, another question I've got here: uh, what are, what are some of the specific questions you ask homeowners to gauge their experience? Some of the specific things that we ask to gauge their experience, um, especially if, uh, it depends on age bracket, right? So if it's someone older who's not more technology driven, we will ask them flat out, would you prefer this or would you prefer a, an old style presentation, right? Because we want their experience, it, it doesn't matter what we want, it matters what they want, right? You know, I was, I'm reading the top question there from a long time ago, but, but it, it is all about the homeowner experience. We make it what they want it to be. You know, all of our guys still have all their stuff with them in one way or another. So if someone doesn't like what we're doing, we're going to adapt to it. So we ask them, well, you know, and we'll do the one to tens and the, you know, on an A through F scale, you know, did, did you enjoy your digital presentation? you know, all that stuff, but is there any way we can change it? You know, what, what about the way we presented this to you or our presentation style 
on our steps did you like or did you not like? So, and we've made changes along the way based on the information we've gotten. Yeah, that's great. Um, awesome. Uh, Vic, if you want to add anything, I'll let you do that, but then I'm going to wrap it up so we only have a few minutes left. Okay. I mean, we just, same kind of things. Uh, we're focused, if it's a, after the project's over, we want to know, did they clean up? That's a really key thing, especially if you're putting gutters and you have screws and all around the yard, you don't want those laying in the, the yard. Did they arrive on time? Were they pleasant? Did they greet you? Just general, general questions. Um, at the end though, we also, after the project's done, um, are you thinking of doing any other projects? Future, we're looking at you for future business. And then uh, do you have anybody that you think might be interested, you know, as a referral? Don't miss the opportunity to ask for referrals, especially if you have a happy customer that's low hanging fruit. And don't be afraid to ask them if they're going to do anything in the future. We have customers that put on gutters and then they need a new roof or vice versa. So it's we have a lot of products that work together. Be sure and do those two things. That's great. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Vicki. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Janelle, but Ryan, Vicki, really appreciate the time and, and thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. We, we enjoyed it. Yep. Thanks everybody for that great insight. That's all the time we have today. Um, as we end the session, you'll see a quick survey pop up in your browser for that post event feedback. We'd be so grateful if you'd share your thoughts with us uh, by filling that out on, on behalf of professional remodeler and leaf. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. So long everybody. See you guys. <laughs>